What's up guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another free Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video we're going to check out some of the new features contained in the new version of the Bag of Pie add-on that's built on geometry nodes for Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright so if you remember Bag of Pie is the add-on for Blender that contains a number of different tools built on top of geometry nodes. And this tool has become all the more powerful now that Blender 3.0 has come out with additional nodes being included. So you can download Bagapi by going to Baga's uh, Gumroad page right here. So you can download this for free. Notice how you can put a value in here of more than free. So if this does have value to you, I recommend that you uh, donate to support um, the developer. So, and that's gonna contain all of these different tools um, We've talked about a bunch of them in the past, so things like different scattering tools, Boolean functions, um, a bunch of different things that are built on geometry nodes. And we'll take a look at a couple of them in a minute, but you can download that from this page. One other thing I want to note is he has also released an assets file. So the assets file is a $45 file that contains 119 different assets. So it's got different plants and rocks and trees, um, other things like that, that allow you to quickly use the scattering tool in order to create realistic things inside a blender. You can scatter any of those with the tools that we're going to look at in just a second. So notice how those are like render ready assets. So again, if that's something that you are interested in and uh, you either want those assets or you just want to support the developer, this could be another great way to do that. So I will link to that in the notes down below as well. But let's take a look inside a Blender at some of the things you can do with this add-on. Alright, and so what this tool does is it basically makes it possible for you to access a bunch of different functions just by tapping the J key. So things like scattering different objects, adding displacement, adding arrays, other things like that. So we'll do a quick run through of these. So I've done a more in-depth video on this in the past, but I just wanted you to be aware of what's available inside of the new version. So we're gonna use a low poly grass pack from Sketchfab. So I will link to that in the notes down below. And so let's say that we had a surface like this. And let's start off by adding a little bit of displacement. So we're just gonna um, tap the J key. Then we're gonna click on the option for displace. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to add a little bit of displacement into or onto this object in order to give us some more like ups and downs and other things like that. So you can set different kinds of displacement in here. And so then we're going to take our objects and select them. And then select this shape right here, tap the J key, this is going to allow us to scatter these objects on the surface. And so one thing that's cool about this is if you tap the N key and you go into the Bag of Pie window right here, you can adjust all of these different things. And these are all being done using geometry nodes. So, but we can adjust like the density of objects that are placed on the surface. We can adjust the randomization using the seed, as well as things like the position in here, as well as down below, there's options for random rotation as well as scale. So let's say for example, that you wanted these to have a little bit of randomization in the way that they're set, you could set the random rotation to whatever down here below. So you can use this to really like quickly randomize objects down here. All right, so then let's say we wanted to paint some objects on this face, right? Like let's say we wanted to add some rocks in here. So what we can do is we can just select the rocks right here and then we could just select this and tap the J key. There's an option here for scatter paint. And so when you do a scatter paint, what that's gonna do is that's gonna place the objects that you have selected in here on the surface. And so I'm gonna exit back out of that and notice how you can remove that as well. I wanna make sure that I've applied the rotation and scale to these objects before I do that. So then if I scatter paint this in here, notice how that's gonna allow me to randomly place these objects on this surface. And then you can also adjust like how many objects are created based on the distance. You can adjust the density up and down, as well as if you wanna randomize this off of that path a little bit, you can do that. Then you can also set like a random rotation on these objects. So you can also randomize scale, but this is really easy to work with. And honestly, I like that it's got buttons in here that make this easy to follow. Um, sometimes it's really easy when you're working with weight paint to like put the weights in the wrong places or it's harder to get rid of them, things like that. This tool makes that extremely easy. But notice how again, you can edit all of these inside of the Bag of Pie window. So this is a really great tool for scattering things inside of Blender. And then once you're done with that, you can just click on exit 
right here. But there's a ton of other things that you can do with this tool as well. So for example, and we'll just add a plane right here for right now, but I'm gonna apply the rotation and scale. Well then if I tap the J key and I add a wall, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a wall around that surface right there. So it's gonna use the edges in here to generate a wall. So you can use this to really quickly add walls. Then you can also tap the J key and you can add windows in here. And so notice when you do that, that's going to basically give you something that kind of like inferences to the faces in here. One thing you wanna make sure you do is I like to use the vertex snapping in here because you want this to be just the width of your wall for the window to work properly. But if I was to click and drag in here like this, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to set a thickness. Well, if I have my vertex snapping on, I can just snap to the back of the wall like this. Well then, if I tab back into um, object mode, you can see how what that's doing is that's quickly adding a window to my object right here. So you can use this to quickly add walls and windows inside of Blender. All right, so another thing I really like about this tool is the array functions that are inside of it. So for example, um, if I was to tap the J key, notice how there's options in here for different kinds of arrays, right? So for example, I could create an array in a line like this. So say I wanted to make like a fence or something like that. Notice how you can quickly adjust those array functions in here. You can also adjust like the relative offset. So if you want more spacing or something like that, you can do that. You can also add some additional like random rotation in here, which we're not going to worry too much about with the line, but it gets really interesting when it comes to like the circle. So there's the line array. You can also add like a circle array like this. So if you had a circle array, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take an object and it's going to add it in a circle around the outside here. So, and notice how you can add like a certain number of rings. So not only can you have like the interior ring, but you can also have like multiple exterior rings as well. But I'm just gonna have one ring. I'm just gonna adjust my radius right here. And so notice how when I adjust my radius and my constant distance, that's gonna adjust the number of objects that are created in here. So notice how right here, for example, my, my constant distance can make this look kind of like a fence. Um, and notice how if you add to the count, what that's doing is that's adding segments to the circle that this is placing this along. So notice how the more of these that I add in here, the smoother the circle is going to be, but the more object that it, objects that it's trying to create. So you can adjust that distance right here. So you could set things like your rotation if you wanted these to rotate out as well as you could give these a little bit of randomization if you wanted that so that they don't look perfect in here. So again, you can also randomize scale and then you can also set your seed to get some different randomizations in here as well. So the array functions in this tool are really cool. So there's an excellent documentation page that talks about how uh, some of the different parts and pieces work as well. I will link to this in the notes down below. As you can see, there's a lot of interesting functions that are in here. And then in this new version, there's also a really excellent IV generation tool. So if I was to tap the J key with the selected and click on IV, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add IV to this object. If I click on and if I click on this, notice how I can adjust like the way the IV is placed, the height of the IV that's in here, all of those different things, as well as adding some additional detail with like loops and resolution. So if you do have anything where you do want to create um, random IV in your scene, and so you can also use that to add IV to objects you've created. So for example, if I wanted these stakes to have IV, I could just tap the uh, J key, go into IV, and then add that like this. So there's a ton of other functions in here as well. I recommend going to the uh, documentation page, which I will link to in the notes down below in order to learn how to use all of this, but a ton of functionality for a free add-on. I recommend you go download it today. So I will link to another video where I got a little bit more in depth on the functions of this add-on, as well as everything else we talked about in the notes down below. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.